É com bastante satisfação que apresentamos a Conferência 4 com o tema O Estado da Arte da Geografia Física no Leste Europeu. À mesa está Gregory Isachenko, professor doutor associado do Departamento de Geografia Física do Instituto de Geografia da Universidade de São Petersburgo, na Rússia. Isachenko desenvolve pesquisa, docência e e orientação focalizados nos seguintes temas. Análise sistêmica da paisagem, estrutura da paisagem, impactos antrópicos e recentes mudanças ambientais, paisagens naturais do leste europeu e unidades da paisagem na Rússia. Hi Greg, we are glad to have you here. Have a great presentation. Boa noite a todas. E todos. Uh, first of all, I should say uh, that it is a great honor for me to uh, have a conference and this outstanding Congress of Brazilian Physical Geographers. And I'm very grateful to organizers of the Congress for very warm uh, greetings here and personally to Professor Dr. Archimedes Perez Filio. Uh, and then I should, um, mm, should say some words about the topic of my uh, conference. Uh, uh, I prefer to concentrate on landscape studies in uh, my country, Russia, and uh, neighboring countries of Central and Eastern Europe because uh, landscape studies is very close to my own research and very uh, familiar to me. Uh, landscape science uh, is uh, the independent direction direction of physical geography and he has uh, it has uh, about 100 year history in the countries of Europe most of all in Russia and uh, Germany the idea of landscape research is the idea of integration of uh, knowledge about components of nature. And these ideas uh, were uh, developed in the science, in natural science, and the border of uh, 19th and 20th centuries. And the concept of landscape has concentrated the ideas about general connection of components and elements of landscape as uh, as rocks, geology, rocks, climate, water, vegetation, soils, and fauna. And uh, the idea of landscape realized the concept of general connection of components and elements of a nature uh, on qualitatively new level of knowledge. As I said, landscape science in Russian has about 100-year history. And there are two foundators, very famous uh, scientists in Russia and in other countries, Vasily Dokuchayev and Lev uh, Berg. Vasily Dekuchayev is also the foundator of uh, modern soil science. Uh, and the idea of uh, landscape is intimately connected with the idea of landscape zoning. And it was the Eurasia, northern Eurasia, where the landscape zonality is quite, quite greatly express it and you see here uh, the first one one of the first maps of landscape zones made by Lev Berg and you see how 
zones are expressed at the stripes at the very wide price, tundra, taiga, and so on and so on and so on. Uh, this is a due to great dimension of Russia or after Soviet Union. To the moment, and at the third, at the last third of uh, last century and the beginning of this century, uh, landscape studies in Russia and uh, in the countries of uh, Central Europe are concentrated mainly at the university centers. You can see most of them on the map. There are about 10 countries. Uh, many of them are the countries which uh, was, mm, was created after the collapse of Soviet Union as Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Belarus, Ukraine, Georgia, and also uh, so-called countries of um, uh, satellites of Soviet Union. It was when Soviet Union existed. Ma now they are countries of uh, European Community. Poland, Czech, Slovakia, uh, Bulgaria. Sorry. The first uh, period of uh, landscape science uh, in Russia and neighboring countries in the first part of uh, 20th century. Uh, it was so-called morphology of landscape. Uh, it connected with the very mm, famous figure uh, in Russian landscape science, Nikolai Sonsov. Uh, the idea was to divide, to divide the territory according to uh, difference in relief, in bedrock, in uh, mm, uh, soils, and in regime of uh, moistening into their units which was called uh, elementary natural territorial complex and so on and so on. Uh, this is a typical scheme of differentiation of elementary landscapes in central Russia. And their stage of landscape morphology or landscape statics up to the middle of last century uh, was the period of mapping. The number of landscape maps that were created in this period is enormous. There are few of them, examples of uh, landscape maps of different scale. Many of them are really the uh, masters of art, as for colors and so on and so on. Uh, and there was very mm, important stage to gathering the primary knowledge about, about the landscape structure of different territories, of different landscape zones. And in that period, uh, before 60s, 1960s, the models of landscape differentiation uh, were made, were created, and the models depended on what university was the university of researcher. Uh, what can he or she saw before him? Mountains or hills? or steeper, or forest, or taiga, and so on. And the schemes of landscape differentiation quite differ due to the uh, home, home landscapes of researchers. It's a very important thing in landscape science. Uh, this is a typical, um, very popular in Russia, um, but not to the moment, scheme of differentiation with very very complicated Russian words that couldn't be pronounced in Portuguese. Uro <laughs> You can see the difference of, for example, bedrock, Jurassic rocks and Cretaceous. And this is a uh, cause, caused differentiation of two landscape localities. 
many examples of landscape patterns in different landscape zones. Uh, for example, forest taiga, uh, for example, tundra, open tundra, and forest steep uh, landscape with erosion forms of relief. But uh, to the beginning of 17th, of 1917th, uh, there was a so-called crisis in landscape science in Russia and neighboring countries because um, their paradigm or the concept of landscape morphology uh, could not um, uh, cor correspond to many data that was um, provided by observations on test plots, expeditions on uh, uh, space figures and so on and so on. Uh, So-called idea of polystructural landscape. That every landscape consists not only of uh, local units, but of uh, different kinds of structures. For example, vertical structure, territorial structure, lateral structure, for example, basins, biocentres, uh, uh, dynamical position, genetical units, uh, so-called processual structure, processes of uh, uh, cycle of uh, water, of cycle of uh, chemical compounds, cycle of litomorphical, and so on and so on, and of course, etological structure, structure of um, etology of landscape, of landscape dynamic. And the idea of polystructural landscape marked the new period of landscape studies, for example, dynamical period from uh, 17th of 70s of last century. Here, there very simply, the difference, uh, different models and the difference between a very popular concept of ecosystem, very popular to the moment in many countries, and geosystem, created in the uh, Soviet Union. Uh, the main difference are the number of connections you see that in ecosystem all connections are central to the some biological object, to population or to species or to biome and so on. And in model of geosystem all connections are equal. Not only central, but each component uh, connected with every component. And the new period of landscape studies was um, connected with the um, so-called physical geographical field stations with uh, observations on landscapes in real time. This is a one of example of uh, such a station, very poor, you very modest. Uh, it was uh, in early 70s in uh, Georgia. Transcaucasia, near uh, capital of Georgia, Tbilisi. But the uh, activity of this field station, uh, about, I think, 20 years, it was fantastic. To number of ob observations, number of models that were um, created here are enormous. And other uh, field stations were organized um, in Moscow University, in uh, Siberia, and in mm, other uh, countries of Europe, for example, in Bulgaria, in Poland, in Czechoslovakia. And uh, one of the typical models of functioning of landscape is here, the, the hydrologic cycle or cycle of water in landscape, in landscape of uh, broad-leaved forest with flows from atmosphere to uh, ground and underground. And in this connection, I uh, it should be mentions, mentioned a very important figure in uh, landscape science of uh, 
Soviet Union and other countries, uh, Nikolai uh, Beruchashvili, uh, one uh, lecture uh, in this conference, is, uh, Professor Hugo Romero knew him very well, uh, but he passed away more than 10 years ago. Uh, he was outstanding landscape researcher because of uh, presenting the time as a so-called fourth dimension of landscapes. Uh, before, usually those researchers who made landscape maps, they thinking about three dimensions and made contours, not thinking about and what will be with this landscape in one day, in one week, in one year, in 100 years. And this was very new um, dimension, really. Here, one of the models of functioning of elem elementary territorial complex uh, in Transcaucasus, uh, made by field station observations. Very many flows of um, solar energy, of water, of uh, biomass, and so on, with figures. And the main thing that these models are differ in time, inside one year, uh, depending on the atmospheric processes, depending on the uh, phenophases of plants, depending on the season. And Thus was created the uh, notion, the concept of daily state of geocomplexes, of uh, landscape. This is a, a structure, this vertical model of vertical structure created by Nikolai Beruchashvili uh, that corresponds to typical uh, one day state or stacks, it's uh, his concept, his term. Uh, in other day, with other characteristics, uh, these horizons, geo horizons, will be other. With the borders will be other, the, for example, um, thickness of this horizon with um, mm, uh, photosynthetic biomass will be other and so on and so on. So um, he provided the models of interannual functioning of uh, landscape with um, um, such a kind of profiles. I pay your attention that uh, this uh, model, this profile characterized only one day. February, in February 1981. In uh, other period, some uh, characteristics, some geo horizons will be other. And in course of year, they will be described um, certain number of stacks or daily states of landscapes. Uh, they are example of their indication. Sorry. Figure means uh, termical interval. Uh, this um, letter means um, humid conditions. And this sign means the so-called tendency of change of structure of vegetation or um, increasing of biomass or stability or decreasing of biomass or something else. And finally, the models uh, that characterized the year cycle in different landscapes. Every round correspond to stacks or one daily state. And this change of stacks in course of typical year. These are steep landscape. This is a landscape of uh, middle mountains with coniferous forest. And uh, in Caucasus, every type of landscape was provided by such kind of models, and these models provided the data 
to uh, mm, that can be used, for example, to prognosis of agricultural uh, things or prognosis of um, uh, changing of uh, color of landscape for some kind of uh, purposes for observations from the um, airplanes and so on and so on. But most of all, they have very um, theoretical sense. And finally, the final book of Nikolai Berutashvili uh, uh, revised all results of field observations on Caucasus. The Caucasus is a not very uh, large mountain area, but quite differ with uh, quite different landscapes from uh, mountain tundra to, how to say, um, look like uh, subtropical forests. And this book con uh, contains descriptions of the landscape of Caucasus and the analysis of data in, uh, collected in many databases. Uh, also con uh, contains descriptions of uh, general computer model of Caucasus and cor corresponding geographic so-called informational heuristic system. And some uh, results uh, in modeling of um, uh, possible changes of landscape of this territory. Uh, so uh, this book was mm, first in the area mm, by using the uh, models of landscape based on um, a notion of landscape state. Uh, and this uh, table demonstrates the difference between a so-called discrete, discrete approach to landscape and continual approach. Uh, these two approaches were recognized were very sharply at the last third of uh, last century. Uh, discrete approach means um, absolutization of uh, landscape units, of borders between landscape. So-called, if I made this map, if I made these contours, it means they exist, really exist, and nothing more. Uh, it is so-called discrete approach. And continual approach um, uh, includes probabilistic nature of uh, connections between components, of borders between landscape units, uh, of um, uh, correlation between, for example, vegetation, soils, relief, and other components of landscape. Uh, and. Uh, in this approach, we um, clearly understand that our borders made in our maps are not uh, unically possible, that other researcher can do it by some other way, and third researcher can do it by some other way. Uh, it is a real, more realistic approach, but usually when we use our uh, landscape studies for, for practical aims, for practical goals, we should provide very discrete borders because every, um, for example, um, those people who plan the territory, who should construct something, they absolutely are not interested in our discussions about continuality and discretity. Uh, so the uh, reality is so that uh, maps on the landscape, uh, borders on landscape maps should be lines or not stripes. But really, in last sort of uh, eight, uh, 20th century, both these approaches uh, can mm, mm, can add each other in uh, and so-called static and functional dynamic components of landscape science uh, were 
make in some kind of synthesis. And such works have appeared in the different centers of landscape science and in many respects were initiated by development of applications, applications of landscape research such as landscape planning, landscape design, environmental assessment, natural resources evaluation, environmental examination and uh, protected nature uh, nature protected areas creation and, and planning. Uh, I think uh, most of the auditorium <coughs> imagine that all these uh, areas of uh, human activity are presented in every country, but in some countries they include landscape research, in some countries they not include. For example, in neighboring with Russia, Finland, very many people, uh, nature scientists, uh, know what is landscape and why they need to use landscape research. It depends on the very many things, for example, of history, of mentality, of history of science, of uh, political system and other. For example, close to Russia, most close to Russia in landscape um, approach uh, is uh, German science, German geography. Uh, but we move through the time and through the space to the landscape research in um, Eastern Europe. Uh, the first, mm, at least as to number of the researchers, the first center of landscape science in the area is Moscow, Moscow University. The main building is very famous. Uh, and the Moscow University is a uh, alma mater of uh, School of Morphology of Landscape created by Nikolai Sonsov and others. Uh, but to the moment the ideas of morphology of landscape are not so popular. And then uh, the many other researchers uh, uh, make other, other studies concerning, for example, functioning of landscape uh, studies of spatial structure and organization of landscape with the use of remote sensing data and uh, elevation models of relief, of course. Uh, So-called multi-scale analysis of landscape structure and, of course, mathematical modeling of landscape structures. Uh, these are briefly the variety of thematic of landscape studies in Moscow University to the moment at the beginning of 21th century. And some examples of this. Uh, this uh, information flows at the system forest environment, uh, the result of cluster analysis. Uh, here are the very many uh, characteristics of uh, vegetation, uh, projective cover of different um, stratas of uh, middle uh, mm, middle diameter of wood uh, of, four, uh, of trees and so on and so on and their their connections. Other example uh, the multi scale surfaces of relief of different order with the use of uh, digital elevation model of uh, different uh, resolution and the new generation of maps and this also the new generation of maps so-called two-level and multi-level map models using uh, digital models and uh, uh, results of space image analysis uh, and sometimes only authors of these uh, maps can briefly and clearly describe what they do. But it's a mm, front of the landscape science and uh, uh, I'm not sure that all of these ideas uh, have a good future. But let's see. Uh, the recent book of my colleague Alexander Horoshev multiple organization of geographical landscape. 
uh, his doctoral thesis. Uh, I should mention the very famous uh, school, landscape sc um, school of landscape ge geochemistry, uh, with her foundator, its foundator, very famous lady, Maria Glazowska, who lived 104 years. And for her last moment, she walked. The uh, so-called model of geochemical landscape, um, based on the model of, uh, of uh, of natural landscape, with the addition of geochemical migration, flows, environment, structure, and and so on. Uh, now. A few words about uh, St. Petersburg Landscape School, uh, which I represent to the moment. Uh, this school, mm, since uh, 60s of last century, developed uh, under the leadership of Professor Anatoly Sachenko, uh, who is now 95 years. Uh, Here's a very famous model of uh, integrated continent. All zoning of all continents of the world are integrated in this uh, abstract continent. Uh, other model, other very famous and very using in our high school uh, is so-called double row physical geographical originalization. One row is uh, zonal from landscape zone Provence, subzone, and other is so-called azonal from uh, physical geographical country, physical geographical region or oblast, and all rows cross it at the landscape as a unit not that cannot be divided in zonal and azonal um, aspects. Uh, one of the main achievements of uh, Leningrad on St. Petersburg Landscape School is a landscape map of the USSR uh, with a scale of 4 million, uh, which was published uh, before the collapse of the USSR, but now uh, the more, in more later times, there are no other mm, maps of such integrity and detality as uh, this one. It is still used not only in the Russia but in neighboring uh, countries. Uh, the overview of uh, landscape of the globe published in 1989 and as an example the landscape map of Southern America from this book. And what is now? Uh, now uh, the main uh, works of uh, St. Petersburg University Landscape School is a works uh, concerning landscape dynamics based on observations on field, field station and, and uh, using other sources of information. Uh, the main concept is uh, landscape as a uh, sum or uh, integration of landscape site as a more stable part of natural complex with the relief, bedrock, moistening and a set of landscape states of different duration from a uh, very short one from diurnal or stexus from seasonal to long term ones that um, that takes about uh, 100 years or maybe first thousand years and so called briefly it's a formula of landscape landscape is a site plus states these are the matrix of uh, typical landscape sites of the um, northwest of european russia there are hills, 
ridges, cliffs, um, valleys, uh, plains with different moistening regime, and of course, peat box. And every unit of this matrix can be divided using the characteristics of bedrock, of uh, mm, relief features, and so on. And this matrix is very used in uh, landscape mapping as a so-called network, network or network or uh, core of uh, map. The units that cannot be changed uh, due to typical uh, impacts or due to the typical um, typical processes in nature, they are stable. They are stable for hundred, for thousand years. But the landscape states in uh, multi-year states, for example, concerning with the vegetation change, they change it in 10 years, in uh, 20 years, in 100 years. They are more flexible. So uh, for mapping them, we, we should use a more frequent uh, mapping than for mapping landscape sites. Our field station is, situation on, is situated on, um, on the shore of Luladega Lake, the deepest and largest lake in Europe, 150 kilometers from St. Petersburg. Uh, these are landscapes of the field station. These are Luladega coast. And the examples of um, results of the study of processes in landscape. This is a this is taiga, mainly forest or bogs, and uh, trees are the main part of landscape, coniferous trees. So we studied uh, how they, uh, how structure of uh, the structure of uh, forest stand. Uh, differs in different landscape sites. How uh, gender chronological data help us to um, to determine what state is now? Uh, the results of landscape studies can be presented in the series of landscape dynamical maps as a basic landscape map or map of sites, as a map of long-term sta states of landscape. In some features, it can be comparable with the map of actual vegetation. A map of impacts of lands on landscape for last 50 years, because in more ancient times, the impacts are not so clearly expressed in present landscapes. Map of present day processes. And of course, finally, map of landscape dynamical scenario. Scena scenario is a form of model when we, in mapping form, answer on the question, what can be with these landscapes of this area in a uh, future 30 or 40 or 50 years, if, if uh, there will not be any human activity, nature protected area, or if we cut all the forests for forest industry, or if fire, forest fire destroyed, for example, 50% of all forests. It is a real situation, and so on and so on. Uh, when we know the models of states, how s different states change uh, in one and the same landscape, we can answer of, uh, to these um, questions with uh, mm, enough probability. An example of map of present day processes uh, near our field station, uh, every, mm, every contour marks the 
mainly the processes of forest regeneration of different stage. Yellow color uh, was the territory, territories uh, using for agriculture, but now are completely abandoned. This is a process of North Russia. Agriculture no exists in North Russia except the environment, environs of las, uh, large cities. And in Taiga zone, every abandoned plot in uh, 30, 40, 50 years are covered with forest. This is a so-called Taiga, uh, Taiga law. I call it Taiga law. And a few words about uh, achievements of our colleagues in other universities and other countries. Uh, Kyiv, Ukraine, is one of the most uh, prominent center of uh, landscape science. But um, now uh, researchers here are close to landscape ecology in um, uh, Western European and uh, Northern American sense. Landscape ecology, mm, uh, they are distinguished by special attention to polystructural landscape, to study of the biotic elements in the landscape and the uh, so-called climatic niches of landscapes. And this is a new uh, manual of landscape ecology published by my friend Mikhail Grodzinski, who is very creative Ukrainian landscape researcher. Here is it. And uh, other his uh, work, very fundamental work, in two volumes in Ukrainian, uh, Understanding landscape, place and space. Few examples of um, studies of Ukrainian uh, landscape researchers. Uh, so called landscape stripes and models of vicinity of different uh, landscapes as to profile from, uh, from, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, autonomic alluvial to superaqual landscapes and the figures marked uh, the uh, mm, uh, qu uh, quantity of matter then put from one one stripe to other while the whole course of uh, matter flow. Other model, mapping model, so-called active points, critical points, and points of flow control in landscape, uh, marked by different hashes. Active points um, means that in this part of landscape, uh, the for example, vegetation is uh, more mm, flexible and uh, more feasible, more can be transformed due to different fluctuations of climate, of uh, diluvial processes and other things. <coughs> These are uh, works of our Polish colleagues mm, that um, they uh, mainly are in course in stream of landscape ecology at the sense of Western Europe. And the titles of the book, uh, books are uh, very clear. The landscape ecology of Andrzej Rickling, the role of landscape studies, to for sustainable development is very popular concept as you know uh, fundamentals of landscape ecology and so on and so on uh, the example of um, model of frequency of connections between components of landscape created by Andrzej Rychling very prominent Polish 
geographer, physical geographer, landscape scientist, landscape ecologist. The uh, diameter of the round means uh, frequency of connections uh, between different ge geo components and the lines means uh, frequency of connections between uh, elements of components. Estonia, very little country that uh, uh, could be missed in some some overviews because of not of significance because of small size. Um, I think Estonia is smaller than every state of Brazil, even uh, even Sergipe. Uh, but uh, the Estonian landscape scientists uh, have very good traditions, and um, in regional uh, regional uh, study of their countries and very comprehensive, very detailed. Uh, and this uh, the final book of. Um, uh, Ivar Arald uh, that describes very, very uh, comprehensive way in Estonian landscapes. They used also uh, new techniques, for example, uh, the comparison of uh, different time space pictures for, uh, for modeling the change of landscape pattern. It's one example. Bulgaria, <coughs> the country of southern Europe, of Mediterranean area, but the landscape studies here are in greatly mm, inherit the tradition of uh, Soviet uh, geography and uh, Soviet landscape st uh, science. Mm, due to the close connections, due to the very um, similar languages, and mm, other things. This is an overview of uh, uh, Bulgarian landscapes made by uh, a group of uh, landscape scientists. Roman Penin is one of my friends. He's a very great traveler, voyager, and author of uh, manuals for school and for high school in Bulgaria. Uh, the example of a uh, map of contemporary landscapes of one of the area of Bulgaria uh, from made by very young but very creative Bulgarian landscape researcher. Uh, after this, uh, a few words about uh, landscape studies outside universities in academician institutes uh, especially in Russia. Uh, the first of it is the Institute of Geography of Siberia uh, in the Russian Academy of Science, created by very, very famous geographer Viktor Sachawa. Uh, the concept of geosystem is um, mainly his concept. To the moment, uh, the Topics of research of this institute quite changed, but really mm, uh, the ideas of geosystem theory, the concepts of landscape invariant, of stable part of landscape, and especially of factorial dynamics areas of landscape are alive. And many uh, young uh, researchers use it in their studies, uh, mainly in Siberia. Siberia is very great. Siberia is is comparable to Brazilia. Uh, one example, the um, change of char characteristic of uh, facies is the elementary complexes of um, so-called sub-hydromorphic profile. Uh, the soil temperature along the profile, soil humidity, index of coverage of herbs, uh, and so on. Uh, in uh, very good period of uh, last third of last century, uh, about five field stations worked at Siberia and collected very important da data. But now, due to the economic economic um, 
reasons they are not active. The map of landscapes of the near Baikal area. Uh, maybe you, you know that Baikal is very um, now under great pressure of, um, of um, pipe construction to transport ne uh, petrol under the danger of uh, new enterprises construction and so on. So it's a, a very critical territory of the world and um, the works of uh, geographers from Siberia, mainly from Irkutsk, uh, Institute of Sochawa, uh, they provided the objective geographical data for conserve, conserve Baikal geosystem for future generations. A few words about uh, cultural landscape. Uh, this is very popular notion, uh, concept, uh, in, um, in between uh, physical geography and cultural geography in different countries. In Russia and neighboring countries, the ideas of cultural landscape uh, became more spread due to the so-called humanization of geography. And now many works concerning cultural landscape. For example, this mm, very important monography of Vladimir Kagansky, uh, they based not only on ideas of physical geography and landscape, natural landscape, they based on quite other ideas uh, which uh, frequently often go beyond geography to culture, to philosophy, to uh, linguistics and other social and human sciences. But uh, this is a phenomena that could not be ignored. We should, should um, involve in it as uh, landscape scientists. One very important book, um, Cultural Landscape at the Heritage Site. site. It was a very uh, important institute of cultural heritage, cultural natural heritage, which was completely destroyed by now due to the mm, purposes very far from the, uh, from the science, uh, political, economical, and others. Uh, the situation with the science in Russia now is not very good. Maybe you know about it. Uh, the example of model of cultural landscape, uh, which include language, community, spiritual culture, economy, settlement patterns, and only one natural comp environment you see. So the cultural landscape is uh, very far from <laughs> natural landscape in uh, researches in our country. Uh, the example of uh, so-called historical landscape science, it's uh, my book is 20 years old, concerned the change of landscape of the region near St. Petersburg over the last uh, 500 years. Uh, this territory was an object of uh, struggle uh, with a few countries, Sweden, Sweden Empire, Russian Empire, after that uh, new Finnish state and these uh, conflicts are realized in landscape structure to the moment. It is very interesting uh, object for, uh, for, for research. Uh, one example, the map of uh, change of bog landscapes uh, for the last uh, 150 century. What very uh, tiger zone is very boggy territory, so uh, box were uh, used for agriculture, for peat excavation, for uh, forestry and for other purposes and it was a very, very interesting history. The example of studies of the aesthetics of landscape. The object of UNESCO heritage of Kiji Island in northern Russia with a very famous wooden church and this is example of work where 
so-called visual envelopes were revealed. Uh, every such area can be observed from one point. E these uh, models used for organized the tourist uh, flows uh, while visiting this uh, island. And I come to finish and should say some words about practical applications of landscape studies in our country and neighboring countries. Uh, it is not secret that the practical application of landscape studies largely depends on the social economic processes in the country and every country. Uh, to the moment, um, the most uh, the greatest demand in Russia are landscape studies on landscape planning and uh, organization of natural protected territories. In Soviet period, there was agriculture, very important um, consumer of landscape studies. Now, absolutely no. Uh, this is a scheme of uh, plan of project of natural protected areas of St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg has a large territory uh, that comparable to territory on Singapore and 20% of the territory are natural forests. The example of uh, a landscape study of a uh, more large scale, it's one uh, administrative region of Russia, in central Russia, and the uh, project of uh, territorial planning was realized in um, 2008 uh, using two maps, the types of landscape sites, or the types long-term states of landscape uh, connected with vegetation, actual vegetation. But I should say that these works um, were very, um, uh, very active up to 2008-2009, when um, petrol price go high. After the crisis, after petrol price go down, uh, most works on territorial planning in Russia also goes down. So now the market of um, landscape scientists for territorial planning is not very, very large. Uh, as to the natural protected areas, uh, it depends on the financial ability <coughs> of administration of a region or city. Moscow and St. Petersburg are rich and they can provide the landscape uh, works for nature protected areas. Other areas, not so rich. These are uh, the so-called algorithm of uh, management of nature protected areas using landscape dynamical approach. Uh, used the map of landscape sites, map of landscape long-term states, the map of processes you see, so-called the legal sources, the low buzz base of low uh, concerned nature protected areas, and the result, the result, planning of nature protected measures or actions used uh, mm, study of landscape and, of course, monitoring. Examples of our works uh, uh, at the natural uh, protected areas in St. Petersburg, near the Baltic Sea, the map of undesirable landscape processes. For example, uh, growth of uh, trees which are not valuable for these uh, geosystems. Birch and so uh, so-called small leaf trees. Other is, uh, example, uh, planning of nature protection measures. Mm, some of them very simple, cleaning of drainage dishes or uh, collecting the garbage, or, for example, very important, limitation of car access to the coast of the sea. And they are realized to the moment and uh, we can see very good results of them. Of them. And finishing, I can present you the book, but not very recent. 
uh, 10 years ago published, but uh, in English, the Landscape Analysis for Sustainable Development, Theory and Applications of Landscape Science in Russia. They completely is in English and collected the main results of landscape science in Russia. Mm, and still, it can be ordered uh, from publish, publisher, Alex Publisher. Muito obrigado.